so welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Antra Arushi, for joining us today. Uh, we're here to talk about a very important and very interesting topic, which is crafting an impactful learning experience with new gen technologies in the workplace. Uh, again, we're here today as part of the virtual thought leadership series between ETHR World and Coursera. So thank you both. Really looking forward to deep dive into the subject. Uh, let's get started if we are all ready. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. So, you know, ladies, uh, again, we're here to talk about crafting impactful learning experiences. So just to start off with, um, could each of you begin with explaining what is a meaningful learning experience, an impactful learning experience in the first place? Surely this has evolved drastically uh, with time. And now we're looking at the interjection of all kinds of new gen technologies. So keeping all this in mind, what would you say, how would you define an impactful and meaningful learning experience today? Uh, Antra, would you like to start? Sure, Devina, thank you. I feel uh, an impactful learning experience for a learner is which stays with them, uh, has a deep impact in terms of experience, high recall value, but at the same time evokes some sort of high emotions that could have come from the way the storytelling was done or the relevant to the topic and uh, which made them realize that they learned something new and, uh, you know, which, which just made them a wow experience. Uh, on the practical side, I feel it was also a little topic which has to be relevant to them at the same time where they felt that they could reflect upon what they learned and what where they are in terms of their learning journey and feel supported in terms of uh, what resources they need or they have and have already a way to give feedback to them. So I think for me, that's what a great impactful learning experience would be. Yes, absolutely. Having a key takeaway at the end. Wonderful. Thank you. Arushi? Absolutely. Antra, I loved how you're thinking about um, almost the end customer in that sense, right, which is the learner in terms of what is important to them and how this can really be impactful. So, you know, I would fully agree. I would say uh, if we look at the various stakeholders in this and what impact means to them, for the learner, the impact is having better skills, being able to do their roles well, being able to progress further in their careers. For the organization, it is being able to deliver on the goals of you know, it might be revenue, it might be customer satisfaction, it might be employee satisfaction, and, you know, a host of other things. And for the bridge, which is the admin and the learning team, to deliver the outcomes that is expected from them in partnership with the business. So I would say each stakeholder, for each of them, impact would be different. So realizing what is important to each stakeholder and then being able to service that and cater to that is what I would call impactful learning. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you for that. It's it's sort of a, a massive team effort, right, to get a impactful learning experience off the ground and, like you say, really cater to what each of your customers, meaning your learners, require. Uh, that's really great. So, you know, Antra, again, we're here to talk about not only meaningful and impactful learning experiences, but the way in which new gen technology is shaping it transforming it and how really we can look at future ready learning experiences. So how would you say in your experience, new gen technologies, AI, VR, uh, ML, of course, Gen AI, uh, no conversation can be had without talking about Gen AI. So how are they transforming the traditional learning methodologies in your experience? And what do you think in that case are some of the most significant and impactful benefits of the same? I think all of the three have uh, very, very different impacts, but largely if we uh, just, if I had to just summarize and say that what has changed, what has been the impact of these amazing technologies, uh, I would say the enhanced engagement and motivation. Um, of course, we had uh, traditional learning methods and I won't deny being grown up in a generation where we had none of these. Uh, I would still say that it was still on the learner uh, to how engaged they want to be and uh, by in luck to say, oh, we had a great teacher and this one I liked and all of those things. But today it is just high consistency. I would say that you go to a chat GPT and you expect a certain answer, you know, get it the way you want. Uh, so it's it's high level of customization. It's high level of enhanced learning experience, more engaging, more enjoyable, more motivating for people to learn more. 
uh, at the at the same time having a very improved knowledge retention because the interactive and the immersive experiences that we have for AR and VR, it leads to better retention of the information. Going back to what I was saying is the experience, you know, something that has a high recall, recall value that stays with you, makes you remember it better uh, than something that you might, you might have read or maybe uh, traditionally a little bored in the class. Uh, so I think that uh, is definitely one of the most important impact. Uh, then real world application, like we say, VR, AR, they provide realistic training scenarios that prepare either the students or you would say employees uh, for you know real world challenges. Uh, so I think uh, that's one uh, bigger impact. Uh, at the same time, data-driven insights. I think AI has been able to help us a big time for all sorts of data-driven insights and uh, uh, chatbots. You have recruitment and onboarding helping um, so much data, which was earlier difficult, I would say, to uh, uh, to rely on and at the same time to take down so much data and then decide on what needs to be done. But now I think it has enabled continuous improvement, uh, what we want to do and enhance training, etc. So I think all of these integrating, whether it's AI, VR, AR into the L&D programs, orgs can create dynamic, effective, personalized learning experiences and enhance the professional growth and overall performance for even the organization as well as the individual. So they are not just transforming uh, employees learn, but I think how to apply the knowledge and the skills in the workplace uh, leading to better outcomes for like how uh, Anur Anushi was saying for both all kinds of stakeholders, not just the employees or the learners themselves, but different stakeholders what the business needed. So I think it's uh, definitely getting better, interesting, and I am just looking forward to how it, get, it gets evolved even further. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Really exciting times, actually. Clearly, there is such a rapid pace of evolution. Uh, to deep dive a little further, uh, Arushi, I'll bring you in on this. To deep dive a little further on the impact of AI, how do you see sort of really personalized learning experiences being curated, being carved out for each individual uh, using AI-driven platforms? Uh, do you think that sort of this Taylor learning experience is going to be uh, enhanced significantly thanks to AI. Yeah. And, uh, you know, absolutely. We're already seeing that happening. And I'll share a few examples of what we have seen on our platform. So at the end of the day, especially an enterprise learner will never expect or want a cookie cutter approach because everyone comes with different skill sets, has different aspirations, has different end goals. And time is also limited, so you wouldn't want to relearn what you already know well and hence spend time on that. So the expectation of personalized learning is high. We've been talking about personalized learning for some time, but truly with the uh, uh, AI tools, it's possible. And the way we've done it is we've said there are 85,000 skills which are available on our platform taught across 10,000 courses. And really, what are the skill sets which an individual needs on the basis of these roles. And what we've done is through the data of our 150 million learners and our work with uh, various institutes on what is required for a role, using these large language models at our backend, we have created these skill sets and roles which are out of the box for the most popular skills. Beyond this, an individual can come into the platform, type in whatever their role is, and get recommendations which are personalized and of course are possible to modify because it will never be a perfect answer. So I think that's the first point around personalization, which is what is the learning that you're absorbing. Second is there is always talk of, you know, I need somebody to interact with me in real time. I want answers to my questions. I can't wait for someone to come in. I'm too shy to ask these questions. What if they are considered, you know, uh, obvious ones? And through AI, we've developed uh, a real-time assistant, which is what we're calling Coursera Coach, where you can ask questions about the course, about the video. You can ask it to summarize. You can take practice questions. You can ask for recommendations for what needs to be done next. You want you know, something in simple words. You want real-life examples. So I think these are two facets, which is personalizing the pathway that an individual is taking and also being a partner in the real-time learning journey to be able to truly personalize this 
and here is where we are receiving great feedback so uh, genuinely it is the advent of data large language models and ai which is helping us deliver on some of these important areas wonderful thanks for sharing that and surely uh, these are all adding up to be highly motivating factors for the end consumer the learner to really step in and embrace uh, all these new learning initiatives so yeah wonderful uh, exciting new era but you know antra all this talk of the the impact of ai emerging technologies where how much it can help evolve the current learning programs is absolutely understood however surely there must be certain challenges right any time you try to rejig uh, an old system uh, there are certain challenges that the organization must face so could you help us understand uh, what some of these challenges may be in your experience and uh, how have you seen them being addressed and overcome to really use the maximum impact of the emerging technologies sure devina so uh, in my experience i have seen that uh, while these technologies are amazing everybody wants to talk about them everybody wants to implement them the bottleneck comes when uh, you come to know about the cost right so uh, there definitely a high initial cost involved uh, the initial investment required for implementing all of these whether it's ai vr ar it's it's substantial uh it could include the cost of hardware or the software and development or even the customized training program that every organization requires based on their needs and that brings a lot of bottleneck at times you know there are teams and we experience we become very excited about oh let's at least have this chatbot let at least solve this problem and uh, teams do a lot of work in making it look uh, fancy and this is solve our problems and then there is this budget and cost that comes but i think in my opinion what we've been able to do also in uh, in thoughtworks and also in previous organization is have these pilot programs uh, where we start small uh, to a team and test the effectiveness then gather the data and then return uh, and then talk about the roi before committing to the full scale implementation and that has really helped us uh, at least get those initial uh, budgets and costs so i think uh, that's one thing that has worked for us in such cases uh also cloud based solutions i think uh, maybe this is something that uh, arushi would uh, uh, know more than me uh, but definitely what i understand is utilizing the uh, cloud based ai platforms to reduce the infrastructure cost and pay for services uh, on the subscription basis that's also another thing that helped us in our previous organization where we had low scale budgets so we were able to manage it uh, this way um another uh, challenge that i have seen and which is not just ai vr but it's also in any other new process or any new system that you get in uh, technological complexity and integration uh, integrating these advanced technologies with the existing systems and how old your existing systems are in the organization it depends and it becomes a real challenge uh, and complex i'm not saying it's not solvable uh but definitely it requires some sort of uh, vendor support or understanding uh, the tool the older tool or uh, the process existing system at our end and then being able to get that kind of vendor support or a training specialist who would train this part of the team uh, so that this implementation can be done better or integration can be done better um third what i've always felt is resistant to change no matter it is this new technology or any other process that we implement as a part of people team also there is always resistance right because people will be um um uh, unfamiliar uh, they have fear of obstacles and they would just be skeptic about its effectiveness and question uh, but i've always felt that if you've done great change management which includes right from your comms to being able to execute and implement it well it really works but a bad change management always uh, uh, never yields the kind of results that you want and uh, another thing that worked for us is involving stakeholders quite early uh, making them a part of the solution uh, to see and if we have that sort of a support uh, then you know later on we've been able to uh, make great results Uh, lastly i'd like to just talk about the data privacy and security concerns it always remains a topic where uh, everything the buck stops really and uh, nobody uh, while we go and talk about compliances and best practices and transparent policies uh, it still is a little question mark in the uh, people's mind i mean the organizations may have done their check in the box and would have said oh no we are compliant and everything's okay uh, how much is the employee convinced uh at least that's the question that i have always heard no matter we we take due care uh, 
and we're able to do regular audits and maintain everything. But I think that's always been a challenge. So that's something that we have to ensure, uh, you know, as a as a measure to navigate the challenge that we are in, ensuring compliance with all the data protection regulations as per the region, country, global, however it's applicable. So those are some of the things that I would like to highlight. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Very relatable and uh, not easy to compress all these various challenges into one uh, brief answer. But thank you for giving us that overview. Uh, Arushi, let's let's bring you in on this. So keeping in mind the challenges and of course, also some solutions in place. Coursera has always managed to really keep innovation alive when it comes to your online learning programs. So uh, how are you really managing to harness all these new gen technologies as we've been discussing, overcome certain challenges to create at the end of the day, just really immersive and engaging learning experiences for all of your uh, customers? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Atra, I really like how you touched on both the practical as well as, uh, as well as the technical aspects of what the challenges might be, right? All of these are real ones, which is, you know, budgets, change management, how uh, it's perceived, etc. And these are very real ones. And I wouldn't say there is ever going to be a magical answer uh, which will come, right? We are only trying and these are the areas that are top of mind. So very rightly said by Antra, using digital technology is really what we are focusing on, where we are saying that the top institutes in the world, uh, you know, which is... Uh, University of Michigan and Indian institutes such as uh, IIM Ahmedabad and others, they are never going to be able to provide in-person, physical, synchronous learning to a large set of people. But there is an opportunity and there is an interest in taking this to many, many learners. So that's really the genesis on which our platform is built. And I think that solves the first part of how do we make it accessible to a larger set of population where you don't only select 10, 15, 20, 50 people from your learner cohort, but you're able to actually provide this to every individual who needs it and who's interested. So I think that's the first part. And as rightly said, this is using digital and cloud technology to be able to disperse quality learning across the board. So that's what we are based on. Second is there is always the importance of uh, the outcome. So if we are not clear of what we want to achieve, there is always risk of falling short because it's possible to provide learning as a benefit, leave it at that, not really track it. It is possible that an individual thinks that they are learning, but they are not really tracking what is the productivity or the skill improvement. Or we are focusing on the wrong areas. Uh, let's say technology is very well understood, but it is the digital and the human skills which will unlock the potential of this technology which needs to be learned by the leadership layer or by the individual contributors. And I think that becomes important, which is knowing the objective and then being able to track against those objectives, which I have often found as a challenge, which we continuously endeavor to deliver on. That's the second thing that I would say. And the third is tangible, presentable uh, outcomes of these learnings, where you know it is very possible that uh, you would say, I have learned Python or I have learned, uh, you know, all of these technologies over here. But, you know, for it to be believed by the organization or by the end customer is not really possible unless you have a certification. So I think that is also something that we are looking to do, which is to make sure quality learning can be provided. The last thing I would say is today, some of the other challenges that are being faced is the organization wants a blend of outside learning as well as what they have internally. And for that, we have created a tool called Post Builder where both these worlds can collide and it can become very, very um, relevant for the learner where they recognize and realize some of the organizational ways of doing things and are also augmented by external areas. So, that's really what we've invested in and companies really like it because, you know, this is a way to deliver relevant learning, but at the same time, what is high quality. So here are the challenges as well as some of the solutions that we have seen in working well. And it's a continuous evolving journey where, you know, every day is challenging and every day is exciting as we discover these solutions. Thank you. 
Sure, absolutely. Uh, thank you again, Arshi, for that. And well, you've touched upon some of it, but uh, as we slowly come to close of the conversation, I'd love to understand from both of you, how do you really envision the, let's say, the next decade of learning and development? How do you see the evolution happening? Uh, what kind of advancements in technology do you see really uh, standing at the forefront? And what new possibilities, therefore, do you foresee for crafting even more impactful and meaningful learning experiences? Devin, I feel it is uh, quite an exciting time for uh, L&D. I think it's a, it's going to be a paradigm shift. Uh, is what It already is, but I think it will get even more uh, than where we are today. Uh, with AI, I feel hyper-personalization. Uh, AI, I feel, will move beyond the adaptive learning and become like truly predictive. Uh, it might, I mean, this is all a guess, but this is just fun, fun question. So I, I just uh, want to think creatively as what I can imagine, but uh, it'll just anticipate individual learning needs, curate personalized learning journeys with seamless, seamlessly integrating into workflows is something that I can think of. Um, then I, I feel the second thing which I, uh, which I feel uh, quite exciting about is XR. So immersive learning with XR where extended reality, um, you know, encompassing both VR and AR that may become a common place for LND, who knows. Uh, simulations will, uh, you know, create even more realistic, engaging experiences. And third one, which is my personal favorite, uh, which I'd like to understand more and see more is uh, the rise of this metaverse uh, in l and We've been able to experience that a little bit. We were uh, doing uh, our own uh, research and tech and how metaverse is in HR as a whole. And uh, some of my team members were able to create an immersive experience for us. And it was uh, really cool. So right now, it's a wow. It's a really cool moment. But it's uh, unable to imagine right now that, you know, attending, say, a virtual conference or a workshop with uh, colleagues worldwide, uh, participating in a, in some learning projects. All that sounds uh, pretty exciting. And so I, I wait to see how that will evolve in l &D. Lastly, what I'm excited about is neuro learning. I've heard a lot. Uh, but I don't know much uh, about it, uh, but I, I'll I'll rely on uh, Arushi uh, to give us uh, some more insights on that. But I think that's a space uh, which is pretty exciting. It's called to be the next new e-learning. And uh, that I feel uh, those training programs that will have that cognitive load, the space repetition, I think all of that's very exciting for me. So I look forward to see what this space evolves into. Yes, absolutely. Arushi, let's get you in on this. Uh, lots of insight, I'm sure you'll have to share on what the future looks like when it comes to learning. Absolutely. So, you know, like you said, it is a paradigm shift and we are seeing that. And with that, the expectations are really rising, right? The learning teams are now supposed to be magicians who can <laughs> deliver everything, which is which was not initially thought possible. So certainly we are seeing a shift. I would definitely plus one the hyper-personalization expectation. The way this is working is a consumer is a consumer. They're getting hyper-personalization in all the other digital media that they're consuming in, uh, you know, the apps that they're interacting with. So that is like their benchmark. That is their expectation for everything, including learning. So I would certainly say that's happening. Secondly, a lot of the repeatable tasks, etc., are being uh, automated and time is getting freed up, right? So there is the possibility of getting creative pursuits, especially for learning professionals to be able to deliver outcomes in a much more wow factor. The third thing that we are seeing is that the interactiveness is now much more possible on digital media versus what it was earlier and the expectation of in-person. This has also got to do with the user personalities changing, right? People are so much more comfortable to be, uh, you know, if getting so much more out of a digital medium versus what they were able to do earlier. And, you know, Antra, I'm so glad you mentioned neuro learning. So uh, Dr. Barbara Oakley, who's one of our staff of uh, professors, has 3.5 million enrolled learners on uh, the course Learning How to Learn, which exactly covers, you know, how the brain absorbs learning and what needs to be done. She's actually doing a tour of India in a couple of weeks from now and is going to be talking about this with a number of our attendees. So, you know, maybe I'll invite you to that session and uh, have you interact with her because she loves to talk about this. She's a professor of neuroscience, by the way, and uh, she talks about learning. So, you know, incidentally, you mentioned it now and she's going to be here a couple of weeks uh, down the line. Super. I look forward. Thank Excellent. you.
Wonderful, ladies. Thank you so much. It truly is such an exciting time. And as you both have said, uh, none of this was possible in the era when we were probably students and learning in uh, the education system. So now we do have the opportunity, of course, to look forward to innovation in the workplace and in our personal life. So wonderful, absolutely exciting times. Thank you so much, Antra Arushi, for being here today on the Virtual Thought Leadership Series. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to get all your insights here uh, on ETHR World and Coursera. And we look forward to finding out what the future has in store for the future of learning. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Same here.